Uh, welcoming in to the Pirate Radio Studios, Pirate Pitchers Danny Beal and Wyatt Lunsford Shankman. And uh, we'll start with the guy that has that controlled chaos on the mound. And then he strikes out the guy to end the inning and just explodes. And of course, I'm talking about Danny Beal. Danny's showing some emotion this weekend. <laughs> we, I like it. It was funny. We were eating uh, <coughs> dinner at Shank's grandparents' Airbnb on Saturday night after, and I hadn't gotten there yet. But JC looked at my dad and goes, I haven't seen that kind of energy out of Danny, like probably ever. And I honestly, I blacked out. I don't even remember. <laughs> I, don't even, I just, I struck him out and I just lost my mind. I don't even, I watched the video back. I was like, I don't even remember doing that. So love it had a, had a shank moment had a shank moment for sure and shank likes uh the degree of difficulty getting the guy getting, striking out a guy with a runner on first it, that's not that cool <laughs> you got to load the bases and uh and get out of that inning how, how about that shank to have that kind of stress although you seem to enjoy it almost yeah it's not the way we drew it up but uh <laughs> Got it, got it done, so that's all that really matters. Wild weekend. Uh, some comebacks on Saturday. Let's go back to Tuesday, though. Mm. That was uh, that was a game. He just said it, not the way we drew it up. That was a nightmare. <laughs> it was actually insane. I, I mean, you guys are able to put what happens, good or bad, in the past pretty quickly. At least you say you do. And I feel like looking at the results, I, I think that's pretty genuine that you do. But... If you lose that one Tuesday, do, do you think it sticks around with you? Like, how big was it to come out on top of that crazy one on Tuesday for the confidence for, I don't know, just being out of the damn ballpark five and a half hours? Yeah. Well, more than that, because you guys were there before, but to get that win, how, how big was that? Uh, it was definitely a better bus ride home than we would have had if we lost, but... Uh... Yeah, it's it's just like a confidence booster, being able to find a way to win some games with some younger guys, with a lot of pitchers that haven't been out there a ton, and having them being able to show the confidence and the poise, just find a way to get out of it. I think that happened a lot with uh, D'Lo, Richie, Cor- Richie, Parker Cor- Thomas. Parker Thomas huge. did a great job that day too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a great learning tool that we can look back on, but it's over now and we're past it. Yeah, and uh, three more wins since then uh, after the series with Wichita State. And, look, you guys have had some games where you've controlled the way, the pitchers. Um, sometimes you need the bats to show up. So how about their, your bats getting you double-digit runs? That always helps too, right? They have been spectacular, even with Star out too. I think yeah. I saw it this morning. Uh, we're like 10-2 and two without Star, which is way above expectations when he, when he was out. But – no, it's they're doing a great job. They're playing great defense behind us. They're making the hits. I mean, we're like the king of two out rallies this weekend. I felt like if like two outs is just that's when we turned it on, which was puts the pressure on them. And the crowd was awesome all weekend, especially on Saturday playing eighteen innings is never easy. But they were there all weekend, and it was awesome. And we're excited to get going again tomorrow. I think the the stat on the first game Saturday. Last time I heard, I think Scooter said like 8 of 12 with two outs or something like that. I think it ended 8 out of 13, but that, that is nuts. It's unreal. And by the way, if you got uh, folks out there hadn't been paying attention, uh, Danny is the new emotional pitcher, and ECU's new power hitter is Joey Barini. Things have changed, <laughs> folks. Tides, tides are turning. <laughs> How about Joey's offensive performance here lately? Uh, he was awesome. I, I, just, like, I didn't even realize it until after the game when I looked at his stats, and I was like, Oh my gosh! Like that is just yeah. so unheard of coming from him because like he's like the little left hander at the bottom of the lineup. You don't think of him to be a crazy power hitter, and then he puts one off the scoreboard like JC <laughs> territory. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he came to play today. And uh, and man, when those bats got going, it really got fun on uh, Saturday. Some questions coming in. This is a good question from Jamie. Who do you guys think is the best team you have faced to date so far this year? I feel like Carolina. One would think, right? I don't know. Yeah. Carolina was a really, really good team. I mean, it was a tight series. I mean, Friday was a one-run game. I think Saturday ended up being a one-run game after you got taken out, or no? It was close. No, I think it was like, it was like two or three. The, the tying run or the go-ahead run was yeah. on base or at the plate, one of the two, which is still. And then, obviously, Sunday was a marathon that ended in a walk-off, so they gave us a tough test. I don't really know. Campbell's always good. I mean, I know we didn't play our best baseball, but UTSA was definitely tough to yeah. play against. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I think it has to go to Carolina. Yeah. I was one that thought, well, UTSA, hey, great great opening weekend for them in the AAC. They, they beat ECU. They really wanted those. They'll, 
well they'll start to slip and pirates will catch them they are still uh right there at the top with you guys and then credit to them and you guys got to see it up close and personal they can really hit right they're a gritty bunch especially at the plate too obviously they have a couple guys that can really throw it but they just string the bats together and obviously when they they have the game they had against the first rounder on friday against trey it kind of sets the tone for the weekend for sure but good thing we grabbed one because it's looking like it if we keep doing what we're doing and they keep doing what they're doing it's going to come down to the wire yeah no doubt uh jamie also asking are you keeping tabs on utsa do the coaches uh keep you up to date on the standings like, how much do you look at that stuff nah. yeah uh, we don't worry about it we just go out there and play our game uh danny bill and wildlands for shaman east U pitchers good throwers of a baseball hitter's worst nightmare is that your work, Alex? Well, All right. well said. It's Alex Harper's work in there in, uh, in Studio B. NC State coming up on Tuesday. You're aware of that, right? Who do we play tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> uh, got him in Raleigh in a surprise. I mean, you guys like to play stressful games, it seems like. Or I don't know if you like to, but you do quite a bit. It's a good trait to have. That was, uh, that was a walk in the park. I'm not expecting one of those on Tuesday. It'd be great if it was. Uh, but they're a good baseball team, and does that uh, fire you up a little extra when you see the red in the opposing dugout? <coughs> I'll take that as a yes. I think we'd be lying if we were to say no, but I still think we have done a tremendous job this year as opposed to years past of not like worrying about what's in the other dugout. Like It doesn't really matter who we're playing. It just matters about... you know When we get to the field, we're going to do a really good job of eating a meal. We're going to do a really good job of getting treatment, focus on early work, then the BP, then in the meeting, and then the PR... Uh, io and then focus on the game it's not really like oh god state's coming to town everybody panic like we embrace that but it's not about them yeah uh well I, we have some in common i do a really good job of eating my meal <laughs> and that's about where it ends uh are you aware i feel like we know stuff y'all don't know because it's kind of it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things but started the season zero and two midweek and i don't believe you've lost one since then last midweek loss came in february that's pretty crazy. Yeah, what happened on that game, Shank? Yeah, I'm pop up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, pretty good run, your own. And, and again, that's just you're playing good baseball all around. But uh, taking care of these midweek games. Yeah, it's I. Well, it's the same thing every year. Everybody freaks out when we lose the couple in the earlier season. And it's like, oh my god, they came in with midweeks. But no, we've taken care of business and we focus on you know what we can do. <clears> and it's uh, we're taking it one game at a time. And Coach G has said it a couple times about closing out innings especially on the mound where it's like it doesn't really matter who's starting it's about the 22 mentality of just closing out innings and taking it one pitch at a time and go until you can't they'll pass to the next guy and the hitters have taken it upon themselves to go out there and really really focus on putting up runs and giving us support because at the end of the day that's what wins games uh cliff seemed pretty drained late saturday night i'm sure you guys were as well after the week and after the day you had the the double header so did you get uh, some rest on sunday what was sunday like for y'all uh pretty lazy day we had lift at 12 get some treatment after that and then kind of just sit down and relax watch some watch some college baseball i know that's what i did sat on the couch went and got dinner relaxed some more and just enjoyed the day that's pretty much it. So NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs on. You chose to go the college baseball route? Always, yeah. yeah. I think if there's baseball on, I'm going to put baseball on. Danny, you a uh, Celtics guy? Yeah, they absolutely curb stomped the Heat yesterday. That was awesome because normally the Heat always give us like a really tough game, and it's always going to be a tough series. I was convinced because our trainer's a Bucks fan. He's from Wisconsin, so I was like – He's a Bucks fan. I'm a Celtics fan. We're just kind of giving each other crap. But I'm like, well, you guys didn't have to get the Heat, and the Heat always find a way to beat the Bucks and the Celtics in the playoffs. But it's a nice time to be a Boston sports fan, especially with the Bruins playing too. Bruins tonight up one nothing in their series. Canes also playing tonight, one up in their series, one zero in their series. Uh, another question, Danny, who is Danny wanting his Patriots to draft? Player or position? You'd think quarterback, but GM has talked about trading back. What do you want the Pats to do in the draft? I don't know. Ethan Norbu was joking in the earlier that he was going to give us number eleven uh, for number three, and I was like, throw in Jefferson, and we got a deal. Who's Norbu? Who's the Ethan Norbu? He's a Vikings fan. Vikings. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's but, right. Um, I don't know. I I really don't want JJ McCarthy. I don't know why. Wait, did you say Jefferson? Justin Jefferson. You would take that, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 100%. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but good thing Norby's not Minnesota's. They'd yeah. run him out. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like. 
they're going to make the right decision. I think it's a completely new direction with Belichick on, but I don't know. I, I'm indifferent on it. I'm just I'm curious to see what happens, and I'm this is the first time in my life that I'm actually going to like be watching the NFL draft. But I'm curious. But we'll make a good decision. Uh, did Robert Kraft screw Bill Belichick after he left? Can we not, dude? I, I, I've I know. Asking it, a question. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. The fact that people like he even came out and denied. He's like, I didn't say anything to the Falcons owner. I didn't like warn him or anything like that. Oh, you just take people at their word, Danny. You got a lot to learn, son. This lot, this world's He's a man of principle. <laughs> and especially after the whole the whatever the it was called the dynasty thing that came out on Apple TV. It's like everybody's like, okay, th- we're just making people that aren't meant to look bad look awful now. Like they made both Belichick look like the worst coach of all time. Like, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I just like getting you kind of fired up. It's annoying, man. It's frustrating. <laughs> can we not? Yeah. All right. Uh, if you guys have any more baseball questions, you can get those in. Danny is done talking NFL uh, <laughs> for this segment. Um, confidence uh, got to be at an all-time high here heading into tomorrow night, and you guys just keep keep riding it, I guess, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. It, I don't even know what to ask you guys. I like, think things are going so well. Yeah. I don't want to jinx anything or I think we're just head down going to work pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're not freaking out, we're not changing anything. We're just staying within ourselves and being the team that we know we can be. Does the grind ever grind you down, Danny? Like when you get to this point in the season or no? Especially, especially with it especially with it being my last year, I I am loving going to the field every day, hanging That's out awesome. with, hanging out with my best friends. Like it's it has been tough at times this year to like look at it in such a grand scheme because it's like it's almost coming to an end. But I think being able to know I can lean on like the Trays, the Shanks, the Jakes of the world, knowing that like I've, I mean, I was, I had been here for a year when they got here, but like being able to go through all the stuff that we've done together and it be like the last year of my career and be the most enjoyable so far has been really special. So I, I mean, I love going to the field every day, hanging out with everyone. We were talking earlier in the show. Uh, I have no tats. Chan has no chats. Tats. Ellerby refuses to get a tat, but we were saying we need a tattoo bet. And uh, Kenny, one of our viewers, said, hey, EC goes to Omaha. Let's all get 23 tattoos. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is perfect. The, I am in. The pitchers do have one of those. Actually. Yeah. What, what is it again? We're all going to get. like Zach Root's going to shave his head. Zach Root's going to. If we go to Omaha, Zach Root's going to shave his head. And then there's like a group of five of us that are going to get PD on our butts if we, <laughs> if, if we win the national championship. So. I like Look that. It. You can clip that, write it down. PD on the butt. So would Zach be pitching with the shaved head in Omaha, or would that be postseason? I would like to think post because I yeah, think yeah. if he shaves it's it going into Omaha, coach, he's going to lose his mind. Yeah. So I think we're just going to just going to do it after it's all said and done. Uh, Shank, how did you not laugh when that guy did a three sixty in the batter's box the other night? Because um, I was watching you, and you kept a straight face. Yeah, I think it was kind of the situation I was in. It wasn't great, but uh, I could have swore I thought I was, did. Thought you I laugh? Saw, I thought I saw him smirk. I thought probably didn't. a little smirk, <laughs> but uh, I kind of noticed it. And it kind of like just caught me off guard at first. Yeah. I didn't understand what had happened. Like I know I knew he swung, but I was like, "What? What's going on here? Why is he on the ground?" Like a cartoon. But, uh, he did. Yeah, it was definitely something that you look back on and it's like, oh, that's pretty funny. But at the time, I was like, oh, he just fell. <laughs> <laughs> it was straight out of Bugs Bunny, man. I've only seen that in cartoons before. Uh, but just something that happens at the ballpark. Uh, you never know what you'll see. Night in, night out, you might see a guy fall down. Carlos, <laughs> our uh, photographer, does like a great job of pe- ki- or capturing pictures of the game. Like He got clonched with the lights out, rounding second oh, base. That, that, was that was really cool. Yeah. Cool. But he, he was taking pictures of all of us at the end of the dugout, and it's on, Twi- on his Twitter if you want to go look at it. I'm pretty sure I retweeted it. But it's like me, Chance Hall, Norby, and a couple other guys just like jaws on the floor. Like there's no way that actually just happened in a Division One baseball game. Like that is unreal to me. But I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> of all time for it to happen. It would be so funny. That was great, and I did see that picture, and I was looking for it earlier today to pull up and, but, uh, and show you, but I could not find it. But I guess it's there somewhere. But – Anyway, I'll I'll mention that later. Uh, Danny Bill White, Lunsford Shankman joining us, Pirate Radio Studios, East Carolina and NC State Tuesday, and then the Pirates back on the road. You've been playing a lot of home games uh, here lately, so yeah. get back on the road and uh, see if you can go win in Memphis this weekend. Yep, 
And we, before this weekend, it was 13 out of our last 19 are at home. I think the only two series we have left on the road are the only two Memphis and Tulane. the only six games we have I yeah. think are Memphis and Tulane, which is nice because it. it's kind of like the it's honestly like the twenty two season where down the stretch we felt like we were always at home, which is really nice to have going to the conference tournament. Mm-hmm. So next week, no midweek because of exams. Finals. Yes. Is that right? Final student athlete. Yep. <laughs> uh, you feeling good about that? My last day of school was today, and my class got canceled. So you want to talk about my win for the day? How about that? I am done with school forever. Forever. No exam? Like, you got exams. You got exams. Well, yeah, but, like, I'm saying I don't have to go no to class. class. I don't have to go to class ever again. Unless yeah. I decide I want to go to, like, school. But that's no. certainly on the table. But I now. could see now. you for yeah, now. just being in school another five years, just kind of hanging out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> College forever. Uh, yeah, what? How, everything good in the classroom with you? Yeah. Easy. <laughs> just easy. Yeah. yeah. You guys are forced to do well, though, right? Like we, we, we like to do well, but okay. uh, it's definitely a priority in the program. Yeah. We don't want to get above a 3.25, and uh, it's it's just like it's easy to see it and be like, oh, that's that's really achievable. Like You can attain that pretty quickly, but uh, it can sneak up on you if you let it. Yeah. Who's well. academic team are you on? AKs? Austin Knights, yeah. yeah. I'm on Blake Hardigrees. How does that work? You have a coach that they draft at the beginning of every season. Oh, have, that's cool. It's, it's like a dra- it's almost like a fantasy draft. You have a draft, and then you have a keeper from your previous team mm-hmm. the year before, <laughs> and then you kind of go through it all. But I think the team that is in the last right now has a team GP of like a three five six, which is unreal. Like wow. that is just. I think AK's in first, isn't he? In he'll be, I'm sure, I think he has because I'm <laughs> sure. I, I think I've heard about it because he. That's just what he does. But do they make the draft results known? Not publicly to us, yeah. Like, yeah. And, yeah. So you the, know the what order play- through is just is just unreal, and he's played so so well this year. And it reminds me of the way he was freshman year, but it was three years ago, so nobody really remembers how great he was. But yeah. he was just as good that year as he is this year. So definitely battled, and, and I guess still battling day to day with stuff, right? Yep. So, yeah. Yep. And 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 playing as hard as he possibly can. Very uh, inspirational. Talking to DB and Wild Lunch for Shankman here. Uh, I'll let you guys go here in a minute. Y'all uh, y'all feeling good? Arm wise, ready to go? Always. <laughs> Danny, I need twelve more from you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Best abilities, availability. I'll be ready. <laughs> uh, that's what we like to hear. NC State and East Carolina coming up on Tuesday. Pirates on the road at Memphis coming up this weekend. 